a young girl in an isolation camp in Monrovia, Liberia, who has Ebola, gets help drinking water from two medical workers from Doctors Without Borders, MSF. As you can see, they're taking precautions by wearing protective clothing. How do medical workers suit up to treat Ebola patients? Here's the protocol. The medical worker suits up in front of a mirror, typically starting out in scrubs, and has a second person observing to do buddy checks. First to come on are the boots, made of rubber, reaching above the ankles. Next, the worker puts on a first set of thin latex gloves, the kind worn by doctors and nurses when doing general exams. Next, the hazmat suit, also referred to as the overalls. After that's securely in place, on comes a surgical mask known as an N95. It blocks microbes from entering and exiting the respiratory system. A hood goes on over the head. It has another mask built into it, followed by a waterproof apron. Then the goggles, but first they're sprayed with an anti-fogging solution. Finally, a second set of gloves, thick rubber ones. Some workers will also strap on a decontamination sprayer, which contains a 0.5% chlorine solution. At this point, the medical worker is ready to enter what's known as the red zone or hot zone and treat the Ebola infected patient. The donning process takes about 15 minutes, but after it's on, the clock is ticking. Because it gets so hot inside, MSF limits the time a worker wears it to an hour. Taking off the protective wear, or doffing, is an even more involved process. Any notepads or other materials brought into the hot zone get burned. Before leaving the high-risk area, workers wash their glove-covered hands in a chlorine solution and walk through a chlorine foot bath. The apron and suit get sprayed front and back. The outer gloves are either doused in the disinfectant or thrown away. Then off come the goggles. Then the first set of gloves, still on the hands, are disinfected before moving the head cover, which is thrown away in a plastic bin. Now it's time to remove the heavy overalls, which get thrown away. Hands washed again. Finally, the gloves come off. Bare hands are washed again. The boots come off to dry, usually upside down on sticks. Then it's finally safe to leave the hot zone and enter the low risk area. The full process requires training and then following this highly specific protocol to avoid the fate of some of West Africa's most prominent doctors who've died from Ebola. That's the short answer.